Hello everyone, today we are here to talk about TrapKey as a TrapKey systems and what are the fortresses products support with the TrapKey systems. In front of me we have a range of MGAR which we'll be discussing today in more in detail with the TrapKey but generally we're going to start with what TrapKey is. TrapKey systems enforces a sequence of operations in predetermined order to the transfer of keys whether they are released or whether they are trapped before the access is permitted to the personnel. So how do the trapped key systems work? So we have an isolation control device which is used to perform that isolation for those hazardous energy sources. Then we have our key exchange devices which are used to enforce that predetermined key sequence. Then we also have our access locks which are used to control the access or to implement a proactive inhibit function using a personal key. As we go more through the video, we're gonna talk about each one of these more in detail. For our isolation control devices, whether it is from one of the energy sources, either electrical, hydraulic, or pneumatic, a trapped key energy control device is selected for each of those hazardous energy source. The energy is isolated by rotating of the key, which then can be released and used to either gain access into a hazardous area for and for using your key exchange devices and your access locks. Now for our key exchange devices, we are going to take the key from our isolation control device. We are going to bring this key from there to our key exchange device, which enforces that predetermined sequence of events. The key will be inserted into the access lock of this device. If you had more than one of your hazardous energy sources and you were isolating each one of those, you might have more than one access keys coming into this key exchange device. This key will allow you to release the top three keys these keys will be gone into the next tap, which will be your access into the hazardous area. In this example, we're using three different keys. So we will be accessing to three different gates where you could only have one access point or you can have two access points. It completely differs from your application to application. And it depends on your current application. To control access, an access lock is installed onto a movable card, which can be operated by using and inserting a key. There's two different ways you can gain access into access lock. It could be via using a key exchange device, or it can be directly from a control isolation device to the access lock. We will review the first option directly from our control isolation device. Going into our access lock, the bottom key is your, our access key once that's turned. Now my top key, as a personal key, which is, is a proactive inhibit function, can be removed and I can gain access. While the actuator is out and then the personal key is out, the key from the bottom lock, my access lock, cannot be removed. For me to be able to take that key, I need to close my gate. I also need to put my personal key back, turn it, and only at that point, I can remove my access key and go back to my isolation device and rotate that. For our second option, we will be utilizing now a key exchange device. So we'll be removing the key from our control isolation device. We'll be inserting into a key exchange device. We'll rotate that key. Now we have three different keys that allows us to gain access into three different access points. Each one of these interlock represents those access point here. So I'll remove my first key. I'll take my first key out which will go into the access lock of this unit. It will be inserted. At the moment, I cannot open the gate because I need to remo rem remove this personal key for that proactive inhibit function. Once that key is removed, my gate can be opened and the access can be gained. I will now close this gate and I'll take my purse access key out and I'll put it back in the key exchange device. If I need to gain access into the second area, I can remove the second key, and this will allow me to gain access into the second gate lock. Again, it also has this proactive inhibit function, so I need to remove that personal key, take that key with me, and then only the gate can be opened.
For the third access point, we have a, an access lock without any pro proactive inhibit function and a personal key. So the moment my access key is inserted and turned, the gate can be opened. When using an isolation control device, a key exchange device, or an access lock, or a combination of one or more of one of these, the defined process requires the exact opposite reversal to re-energize the hazardous energy or to restart your machine. We now also gonna look into our Osborne range, which mainly focuses on an interlock blocking devices and photoelectric blocking devices. Over here, we have an interlock blocking device. We also have our photoelectric blocking devices, which are normally used on our light curtains. These also have this big blocking plate, which normally goes in the front of your light curtains and it will stop from there and releases that personal key for the personnel to take with themselves. We as a fortress focuses heavily on specializing on interlocking and we have the expertise in designing and providing the trap key systems to meet the requirements of each application and we can tailor it uniquely to your application as well. We also in fortress have that particular range which is mechanical trapped key which is what we focused on today guard range. It is made out of metal alloy but it can also come in full stainless steel and it can also be incorporated in almost any new or existing setting that you already might have at your site. Once again I would like to thank you all for watching. Any questions please reach out to us. Thank you.